Do you remember Martin Shkreli? He was dubbed the most hated man in America when his pharmaceutical company raised the price of a drug, a pretty rare drug, by about 5,000%. Since then, he has been busy making a name for himself and speaking a lot on Twitter, and he joins us now. Martin, it's good to see you. Thanks for having me. So you're one of the most hated. It's hard to know who's the most hated man in America, but you're definitely up there. Yeah, no, you know no. what I mean? And I, I'd give you the crown, but I don't have the poll here. Um, so typically when people are under assault in the press, they go through a now familiar series of public confessions. They go on Ellen and cry. They go on Dancing with the Stars, humiliate or themselves. Or hide. Exa or hide, exactly. Move to Barbados. You've gone on to Twitter and just gone like crazy. So election, I can't even read some of these because they're, they're too over the top, but election night, you tw tweeted this to Hillary Clinton. I've always hated you, you stupid blank. Time to close the Clinton Foundation. No more influence to peddle, Hillary Clinton. You go on, you attack celebrities, Britney Spears you attack, and then, I mean, I could just go on and on and on. Bernie Sanders, you're a loser who doesn't understand economics or business. Keep my name out of your mouth. Take your communism to a country that wants it. Well, that's what happened, right? I mean, they, uh, this country rejected uh, uh, socialist uh, and communist policies. Well, sure, but controls. your strategy has been to, you know, rather than pull back, to just to pull forward. I look at our president-elect. You know, being honest and authentic, even if it's imperfect, is something that Americans like. I, I, I could have easily done all the, you know, we hired consultants for millions of dollars that, that'll tell me to, the right way to, to look and the right way to act in, in front of news cameras. But at the end of the day, I can only be myself. And that's why I think one of the reasons why Donald Trump is our president-elect. Did anybody advise, did you have any advisors say, you know what, if you really want to rehabilitate your image, go on Twitter and give the finger to Hillary Clinton. No one told me that. Okay. <laughs> Nobody did? No. But uh, I think, you know, speaking from the heart is something, again, you know, we, you have someone like Hillary Clinton who is carefully trained, carefully manicured product uh, to, be, to be consumed by our electorate, and uh, she lost. And honesty trumps, uh, I think, uh, you know, this sort of fake persona that, you know, 90% of pharmaceutical CEOs have. You know, right. I think they, they sort of look and act the part, but the reality is they're, they're 100 times worse than I am. So... Um, you were at the bottom of a media dog pile, a hate fest. It was like that short story, The Lottery. You were being stoned by the crowd. So I'm sympathetic to that. However, I have to say, in cases like yours and in yours specifically, where you have someone who takes a product he did not create, mm -hmm. added no apparent value mm -hmm. to it, and then jacks the price up, it does seem like kind of a parasite move. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's interesting. These big drug companies, they don't uh, look at these drugs any more fondly than you look at your, the shoes in your closet that you haven't worn in five years and you're ready to throw away. They're old medicines that nobody cares about anymore, and they get passed around by, from company to company to company looking for a home for tender love and care. The reason they get passed around is because they're not Viagra. They're not Lipitor. They're not big sellers. These right. drugs sell almost nothing, and it costs millions of dollars to make a medicine. Um, even to make it for um, one drug I bought, the company stopped making it because it wasn't worth it to them. Right. And the 300 patients that needed this drug to survive, they didn't have anybody that actually wanted to make the pill for them, just to stamp out a pill. And so we bought that drug. We raised it 20-fold. There was no media celebrity. There was no, uh, nobody knew who I was that day, the day before, the day after. It was only after, I've done this about six times, and each time the patients thank me for doing it because they say, I'd rather have someone make a few dollars and make my pills reliably, maybe continue research in the field, give grants out, do the things that you need to do to be a drug company, because when I have this rare disease, only a few hundred people have my illness. Right. It's, I don't have the numbers of erectile dysfunction or cholesterol. I, I get that, but if you raise it 5,000%, it seems a bit like a hostage situation. It's, it's still barely profitable, and if you look at the, um, the amount of uh, people that have this illness and you add it all up, there are orphan drugs that are half a million a year, every year, forever. So you've got to pay a drug company $5 million to survive. That's a hostage situation. Our pill is $25,000 if you take it for the amount of time you're supposed to take it. That's pretty comparable or even a lot less than most of the drugs of the kind. So I looked at it and said, you know, I don't, I don't listen to the media. I don't listen to politicians. I listen to rationality and logic. And I, I think you do as well. And I'm going to price this drug where it belongs, not where somebody tells me to, not where it's going to look bad or, right. or make me look good. And I'm going to serve these patients. And, and that's what I've done. So you're now facing criminal charges not related to this. That's right. So how did that happen? It's a good question. The Cliff Notes version. Yeah, no, I, I wish I had uh, the Bill Clinton uh, Loretta Lynch friendship that uh, apparently allowed him to talk to Hillary Clinton and ex uh, Loretta Lynch and, and explain his uh, situation before uh, she was indicted. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I don't have that kind of uh, uh, pull. Um, I think a lot of people feel my my prosecution was politically motivated, and that um, uh, these charges are very hard. If you try to read what happened, it's very hard to understand. We don't even understand what exactly was done that was illegal. And um, I think that uh, this case was only really brought after 
uh, I was uh, in, thrust in the media spotlight after the Dare Prim situation. Did the investigation begin before you became infamous? Oh, absolutely. Okay. But your contention is you never would have been indicted had it not been for the attention that Hillary brought to you by tweeting about you. Never is a strong word, but you know, prosecutors, like polit any other politician, they become famous when they indict famous people. These prosecutors need a job at a law firm. To, you know, they need to make $5 million right. working at a top law firm, the same way Preet Bharara could make $5 million right. if he became a partner at uh, one of the law firms in this building. So you like Trump, I think. Sure. Seem to on Twitter anyway. Love but Trump is making a counter case really kind of against yours. He did with Boeing the other day. He said, you know what, we want him to make money, but we don't want him to make too much money. Yeah, and I don't want to make too much money either. You know, the Turing is a company that's across the street from here, literally catty corner. Its profit margins are very thin. Pfizer raises the drug price of uh, Viagra 13% last year. 13%. Okay. You're supposed to raise prices to Not keep... to brag, but I wouldn't know. Yeah. Uh, you're supposed to raise prices in line with inflation to combat, okay. you know, inflationary forces. That's why your salary, maybe your salary goes up 10% a year, but most people's salaries goes up 1% or 2% a year because it's supposed to keep pace with inflation. It doesn't make sense to me that Pfizer, who's going to make, what, $10, $20 billion this year, needs to raise the price of Viagra 10%. I've got 100 people, catty corner from here, barely making ends meet. We, we're trying to make new drugs for rare diseases. We need the money. Boeing doesn't need the money. Pfizer doesn't need, need the money. I started turning two years ago. Uh, and we're doing groundbreaking research in five or six different diseases. And I think it's okay for us to make a small profit. So you're cool with the government coming down on big companies and saying you're price gouging, but not on little companies or your company? I'm not cool with, with any communist price, price, uh, uh, price fixing. Um, I think what Trump wants to do is pretty smart. You know, he, he understands that pharma companies have been getting away with quite a, quite a nice gig uh, raising drug prices. And I think what he wants to do is encourage FDA to approve generics more, more quickly. Yes. And he, the FDA's done a very bad job of that. And uh, I think that um, if he can figure that out, and I think he will, he's, he seems to be on top of things, there'll be a lot more competition in the drug marketplace. Wouldn't that undercut your business? Sure. But, you know, I, I, um, I, part of being a business person is taking advantage of the playing field like a football game. And if they're throwing a blitz, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass and vice versa. And, you know, the situation in the play field was set up the way it was when I started my company. Yep. And I'm not permanently going to, I, I do drug research. If they're going to incentivize that, that would help me. So, right. you know, it depends on the situation. Interesting. Martin, thanks for joining us. Thank you. You did not come with security. I just want our viewers, our <laughs> it's good to see you. That was really interesting.